being trafficked, I don't think people, I don't think people realize how close to home that it can actually happen without even knowing it and how, um, how common and more common it is. You can think someone is like into you or is a friend to you um, without knowing it's a complete setup. You're gonna start with just saying, hi, my name's Nikki, and you can give a little back story about yourself. Right now? Yeah, you're up. Okay. Hi, my name's Nikki. I'm originally from Muskegon, Michigan. I've always been a fighter. No matter what, like growing up in life, um, obstacles I've had to overcome. I was raised by my father, who was an alcoholic. I did all the wife duties, I guess. I took care of my sisters, took care of him being drunk, instead of just being a child growing up. When I decided to actually start working in a club, I had just quit my job. A girl I was friends with, she uh, um, actually bet me because they had a job opportunity to work at, they were hiring dancers. I called and went and auditioned and I made $300 in my audition and that's what started me. I was like, oh, like one audition, like I danced to two songs and I got $300. Like, that's what's up. Like what, I should have did this a long time ago. When I was dancing at the time, I didn't think it was that serious. Like, as long as I wasn't physically sleeping, I thought it was okay. I didn't see what was wrong with it. I was coerced by another dancer and her boyfriend into thinking that uh, we were gonna go club hopping together. Instead, they uh, took me to South Carolina. I woke up and to find out that they had brought me to a trafficker they were gone and I was left there with a stranger in my room. He told me, you ain't going nowhere, you're mine. And hit me across the face. My whole face was black and blue. Um, and I was stuck in that room for two weeks Why men would hit him up. The disgusting thing even worse, like, the guys that paid for it didn't even care that there was a grown man with a gun standing there watching whatever they did. I was scared. I was petrified. Um, I really didn't think I was going to make it out. There was one kid that came into the room and said he would pay extra if my trafficker would leave because he didn't feel comfortable doing anything with him standing right there. And so when my trafficker left the room and went next door, I ran. I took out the room and I ran, and the nearest thing I could run to was a TA truck stop. I hid in the truck stop for three days before I even talked to anybody. I literally lived did not eat anything. If I got thirsty, I would go to the bathroom and like cup water out of the sink because I was so thirsty and dehydrated. The manager, bless his heart, actually noticed me hanging out in there for like three days straight. And he pulled me to the side. He was like, now you don't look homeless. He's like, so what's going on? And as soon as he asked me those words, I broke down. Like, the, the tears just flew down my face. He got me in contact with the phone, and I called Peace Promise, which I am very close with. <laughs> and it was within seconds. I had $50 Western Union to me and a bus ticket for the next morning. The majority of the men that were coming into the room that were paying were truckers, but yet the ones that helped me out and kind of looked after me my last night 
in South Carolina at the truck stop were truckers. It does mess with your head a little bit because it's like you got good and bad no matter where you go. So it's like you can't necessarily be like, okay, so this person hurt me. So that means everybody like that is going to hurt me. Um, just got to heal, I guess, and know that there's, there's good and bad no matter what. Jen from She's Somebody's Daughter had gave me a list of like seven safe houses that I could go to. If I was going to get out of the industry and really change my life, I needed to go big. I chose to come to the well. That's what really changed my life. Reading online, I thought there was gonna be horses and like, chopping wood and I was on 80 some acres of land but then I got here and I was just on 83 acres of trees like that's it trees well mother nature and trees um, and it wasn't no gotta chop your own wood it actually was a, a very nice home <laughs> I tried to leave every single weekend Friday hit it was a wrap Saturday I'm trying to leave it was tough to get used to coming from not ever having structure in your life to pretty much having a lot of structure. So it was hard. It was really, really hard. And everyone said, like, I told you this wasn't going to be easy. And I'm like, I know, I know, I know. It was just, it was a different kind of hard than what I expected. My transformation was I had a fish dream. I kept having a dream of my fish jumping out of his fish bowl, and every time I would come back into the room, I'd have to search for him and put him back in. And about the third time after he had jumped out of the bowl, uh, I told him, I was like, dude, you need to stop jumping out of the bowl. Like, you're gonna die. Like, stop. It was like Jesus telling me, like, if you keep trying to leave the well, which the well was my fish bowl, like, you're gonna end up dying. Like, you're, you're not gonna make it. I never tried to leave since that day. That was my wake up call. That if I left the well, I was going to die. Going to beauty school was always a dream of mine. It wasn't until here where, when I seen that you can like go to school, make a career, like it gave you the opportunities to do it. Um, that I was like, I'm here, I'm gonna be here for two years. I'm gonna do what I've wanted to do because now I have the chance. So when I leave here, I have a career, right? Being at the well, I grew strong in my faith, and I wasn't always that way before. And then, like, like unity with all the girls, like we all were like one, um, had each other's back, helped each other out. I was always willing to help anybody that needed it. I did pick up a lot of good habits from being here. It sure put me on the right track. I left here with passing my boards um, from school, so I became a licensed cosmetologist. I was able to put my down payment on my apartment, buy a car. Things are going good. Like, I'm finally, I'm living the good life. Peace Promise, which is my church organization, actually furnished my entire place for me. It was nice to be able to just uh, come home to a home that was already set up for me, down to the pictures on the wall. This is my kitchen. It's different making dinners by myself a lot of the times. I'm still getting into the habit of making meals and preparing them ahead of time so I don't have to just run to Chipotle or Dairy Queen and grab something to eat because it's so much simpler. <laughs> I've done a lot of work. I've done a lot of therapy. I've put in a lot of time to not let it affect me anymore. Since being trafficked, I was on anxiety meds, depression meds, meds for sleep, and I'm not on any meds, I don't take nothing. Um, and I'm fine, like it doesn't, 
I sleep fine. Um, I'm not anxious. Um, I don't feel depressed at all. It's just, it was a trauma. Um, it definitely affected my life and like I say, my trust, my trust is my biggest thing that I have to work on overcoming and being able to like really trust somebody again. Um, but other than that, like, yeah, I guess you can kind of say I forgive them. If I still had that much hate in my heart, I don't think I would be as fine and living fine day to day and excelling in life the way I am. The people I choose to be around is different. The things I do with my time is different. Like I just, I know I'm a changed person, like through and through. And it's because of this place.